Good morning. This is John Fallett. You are tuned into Roadmap to Success with Senior Enrollment Solutions. It's August 26, 2022. We're heading into the deep dive into DSNP, CSNP, who they're for and how to market them. Good morning to all of you. It's 10 o'clock Friday morning, once again, August 26. Uh, all of these recordings will be on YouTube. If you've missed any of the prior 19 recordings, they are on the SES Agent YouTube channel. Uh, once again, we do have the Senior Enrollment Solutions YouTube channel, which is primarily for uh, the consumer, the over 65. We also have the Agent YouTube channel as well. So certainly, if you feel as though you've ever missed anything, feel free to go back into the YouTube channels. You can pull all the recordings. If you don't wish to have the recording and you just wish to have the PDF or the PowerPoint of what we go through, uh, certainly request that as well, and we'd be happy to provide it to you. So. Without further ado, it's 10 o'clock. We should be done by 11 latest. Uh, I'll keep you right on track. And then once again, after 11 o'clock, we will be open for Q&A. So real quick disclaimer, you know, we've gone through a tremendous amount of information over the last 19 weeks. I've really tried to puke almost two decades worth of insurance knowledge on you to help you understand the runnings of a business, the product knowledge, the AHIP, getting through your certifications, getting yourself organized as there's what, 36 days left until AEP? You have 36 days. Now CMS just dropped a whole lot of compliance on you as well in regards to your call recordings, your disclaimers, not only voice, but on the multi-plan, uh, having any of your marketing materials need to be reprinted. There's a tremendous amount to do on the marketing side to make sure that you have enough leads rolling in. So once again, if you have questions on marketing, if you have questions on rate of return, how to set up your marketing, how to run your business, please go back into the YouTube, rewatch those videos, review your topics. Obviously, we will always bring you back to Sales 101. This is not insurance sales, this is sales 101. In any sales, it's best to understand what topics you're actually discussing and to be a professional, that's why you're tuned in, to become more knowledgeable and a professional so you have those answers for your consumers. We will once again provide you additional time, Q&A. After this uh, webinar, we'll be on for another hour's time. If you have questions, you're more than welcome to text us to the 24 seven SES text line, email us or phone agent services or anyone in the agent services or myself directly, be happy to answer your questions uh, after the webinar is over. Week 18, last week, we went through low income subsidy. This week, we're going through the Medicaid side. So once again, let's understand this low income subsidy, this extra help with your social security. That is social security that we're discussing, a national platform. With the D SNPs and C SNPs, we're getting into state funded Medicaid programs. And we'll get into those here in a second. Once again, as a review, you should know off the tip of your tongue the five benefits that low income subsidy provides to your clients and how to be able to sell an MAPD or a med sub and helping that consumer obtain that LIS and how to obtain the referrals from helping that consumer save potentially thousands or tens of thousands of dollars off their prescription drug costs, their Part B costs, and really going through the annual savings with your consumers to let them know, look, Bill, I helped you save thousands of dollars, refer me out. Who else is in your situation? Who else can I help? to get into that six degrees of separation, to teach and assist the client with the enrollment, know how to get these consumers pushed through, whether or not they're a retiree aging in at 72, picking up their Part B and needing that form, that social security application to apply for the Part B, or whether or not they've been on Medicare for 20 years and now you find out that, oh my gosh, you qualify for low income subsidy, let's get you taken care of. Gain the referrals from helping these consumers. Every person you come across, unless they're holding their green Michigan health plan card or any other state funded Medicaid card, 
ask them the question, hey, I don't want to get too personal with you, but do you make more than $1,500 a month in income? Do you make more than $2,500 a month in income? See if they're going to qualify for that additional assistance through low income subsidy. Your homework for this last week, memorize, understand the five benefits that LIS Extra help provide your clients. Know where to locate your local social security information, their fax numbers, their contacts. If you're typically working in the same geographical area, it is really important that you know who that person is at social security. Bring them a box of donuts if needed. Walk in and introduce yourself, letting them know, look, my name's John. I work in Oakland County. I just wanted to introduce myself because I will be dropping off paperwork to you. I will be faxing paperwork to you. And I want to know that you're going to get my clients taken care of. It's okay to do so. It is okay to know the specific fax numbers and individuals at your local social security offices. Download the LIS CMS documents, right? Download the application to apply for extra help. Know where to go online to assist your consumer if necessary. Applying for the Part B, the letter of credible coverage that the employer needs. A lot of consumers are, are retiring after the age of 65. We have to know as a growing society how to help these consumers as licensed agents. Very, very important because otherwise they're going to have a hiccup. There's penalties. You're not going to be the professional once again that they're expecting to have. Your DSNIP plans. Our MAPD plans for those with both Medicare and Medicaid, a dual eligible plan. They have their Medicare through the federal government, through CMS. They have their A and their B. They don't have to be 65 once again, correct? They could be on disability 25 months. They automatically then receive their Medicare. So they may be 28 years of age on Medicare, making no money because they don't have any money because they're on disability. And so then the state comes into play and helps them with the state funded coverage. What is the decent plans? How are they offered? So there's a slew of acronyms going around out there. If they're FBDE, they're a full benefit dual eligible consumer. That means that they have full LIS and they have full Medicaid. So before we get too much further in depth, let's understand something. If you make too much money, you don't get extra help. You don't get low income subsidy. If you make just enough money, right, under 1,500 individual, under 2,500 as a married couple, as a guesstimate, right, round figures, you may qualify for extra help through Social Security, low income subsidy. If your income is beneath that, you would qualify for Medicaid through the state. There's two levels of Medicaid through the state. You either have a spend down, S-P-E-N-D, a monthly deductible that's required for you to pay, or you are 100% fully covered Medicaid recipient. So understand that spend down, and let's talk about that for just a brief moment. If a consumer is on a spend down, they may be a Slim B plus, they may be a QMB. They're not going to be a QMB plus, a qualified Medicare beneficiary plus additional assistance or a FBDE. So keep in mind and understand that if someone's on a spend down and they have that monthly Medicaid deductible, typically $890, $900 round figures per month, if you're only making $1,000 a month and the government or the state puts a $1,000 deductible on you, you're, you're never going to go to any physician. You'll never see a doctor. You'll never have anything done because you're so scared of what that potential bill may be, the unknown, because you have that spend down. If you're a higher level Medicaid recipient, you're on a spend down. Do not put these people on decent plans. Don't do it. They're in a 70-30 coinsurance at that point in time. 
and they're still receiving bills. Those consumers that are on a spend down really should be on a zero premium or a premium under $33 and change to follow LIS. They should be on a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan where now they know that they have Medicaid, they're still on this zero cost plan, but now they also realize that they can go to their primary care at no cost. They have better dental, they have better vision, they have better over the counter. So understanding that QMB, QMB plus, SlimB, SlimB plus, understanding these acronyms do become important as when you phone the carrier or when you go onto some of these carrier websites, like United Health will show you their level, right? When you get onto these carrier websites or phone the carriers, this is how they talk to you. On the bottom of the DSNP Excel that we share with all of the agents on, and if you do not have it for 2022 or for 2023, please request it. On the bottom of that Excel, it will show you how the carrier, DSNP carriers will accept. Do they accept QMB and QMB plus? Do they only accept QMB plus? And it will really help you understand the levels of the Medicaid. But really, in layman's terms, we're discussing a spend down, monthly deductible, or full Medicaid, right? I hope that makes sense. And we'll go back through these slides in a moment. But I'm looking at the upcoming slides and wanted to make sure that we don't have any further confusion. So an FBDE, a full benefit dual eligible, they have full Medicaid coverage. The states decide, obviously, on their income. Every state has a different income requirement. The state does pay for their Part B premium, so there's no out of pocket. And the states can require Part A and B if they pay the beneficiaries premiums for those parts. Next slide, a QMB, this is more familiar. Most of your Michigan, most of you are Michigan agents that are currently on, your QMB, your income be up, can be up to the 100% federal poverty level, right? It, the resources can be more than three times the SSI resource limit. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Or go back to last week's webinar, we went through it then. Helps pay for party and Part B premiums. Your Medicare providers aren't allowed to build Medicare deductibles, co-insurance, co-payments and services, et cetera, right? It's run through the state. Your QMB plus, this is primarily who your DSNP individuals are. They get full Medicaid coverage plus Medicare premiums and cost sharing coverage. It helps them pay for their Part A and Part B premiums. And then Medicare providers aren't allowed to bill additional above and beyond, right? However, keep in mind, even on the DSNP consumer, we're always going through those three steps, right? We're always going to make sure that their medications are covered on that DSNP plan and their physicians and specialists are accepted by that DSNP carrier. They have to see a physician that accepts both Medicaid through the state to bill Medicaid, and then their DSNP carrier picks up the difference or works with the state uh, in regards to that consumer's bills. So on any DSNP plan, you have to make sure that their medications are still covered under the formulary of the plan and that their physicians and their specialists are accepted Otherwise, then they may be responsible for the additional deductibles, coinsurance, et cetera. Your Slim B is a specified low income Medicare beneficiary plus. These beneficiaries get full Medicaid coverage plus meet the Slim, M, Slim B, which we'll get to in a second, related eligibility requirements. They're medically needy or spending down excess income to meet the medically needy level. So here you go. If someone's a Slim B plus, they're on that monthly deductible, right? They have that $900, $890, $1,000 deductible monthly. So they didn't reach the full Medicaid level. These are your zero premium or under $33 per month premium consumers. These are not per se a DSNP style consumer. 
they do get help paying for their Part B premiums. Medicaid does not pay towards out-of-pocket costs for the deductible premium, co-insurance, co-payments, Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage. They do still have the low income subsidy and all the five benefits, but they are responsible for out-of-pocket costs until they reach that monthly Medicaid deductible. DSNP plans. So your consumers on most of your DSNP policies are under the age of 65. If you're under the age of 65 in most states, on the Medicare supplement plan side, you're able to purchase either a plan A or a plan C. And your monthly premium is outrageous. So 99.999% of all consumers that are on Medicare under the age of 65 are typically on disability. That's how they got there in the first place, right? Otherwise, Medicare is going to say, go to the ACA, right? I think we're discussing that next week. <clears throat> go get go get an ACA style or an individual major medical plan. So whenever you receive a lead or you hear that someone's on Medicare and they're not 65, my initial assumption is they're on disability. They went through the 25 months through Social Security to obtain that total disability. Now the federal government steps in and says, wow, we're really sorry that you broke your back. We're going to help with some health insurance for you until you're on true Medicare. And then you're obviously able to have an extra election period. And then at that point in time, the consumer may purchase a Medicare supplemental plan. But once again, you talk to anyone under 65, they're going to be basically on disability and most likely will be receiving some kind of state aid because their income is low enough for them to do so. They have a hardship in life. Maybe, maybe they're over 65 and they had a self-employed spouse. I have helped many consumers that the husband owns, say, a butcher shop, and he was self-employed and just did cash under the table and never really claimed anything on his FICA. And then he passes away and they don't have enough credits or they have enough credits, but their income is low enough to where they have to have that D SNP stock, right? They qualify for Medicaid because Harold passed away and now I'm stuck with no social security. What am I going to do? That does happen from time to time. Typically there's some kind of hardship if they are over 65 um, in regards to how much they paid into FICA. If they're under 65, it's just simply a hardship in life. Auto accident, fell off a roof, whatever the case may be. Their income qualifies them for low income subsidy, extra help and Medicaid through the state. So we understand that there are so many levels with this now, correct? There's technically four. They have Medicare through the government. They have low income subsidy through Social Security. Then they also have Medicaid through the state. And then they also have some private insurance company that's getting paid throughout this process to help administer and manage the plan. So why do these carriers exist? Why are there DSNP style plans? Well, it's because these carriers are far more efficient at processing claims, at understanding consumer health, at administering, right? HMO, they're, they're administering the consumer to help keep them out of the hospital, to help it, keep everyone's costs lower. And that's why these DSNP and these private insurance carriers exist. Sometimes these consumers are homeless or in a short-term housing situation. Keep in mind they need an address. So come up with some kind of address where they may be in order to help them get their insurance card and help them get their over-the-counter card or their grocery card or what have you. So that way they have their cards. But there, there are a lot of uh, individuals out there that literally are making no money or on the streets that need our assistance. They make too little money for the spend down. Just because a consumer has Medicaid doesn't mean a DSNP is their right plan, right? Keep in mind, there's two levels. You have that spend down where MAPD is zero premium plan 
or a plan that's under $33 a month is going to be the right fit for this consumer. Medicaid currently covers everything. Why would your consumer want a decent plan? And let's talk about that. If a consumer has full-blown Medicaid, they have no out-of-pocket costs for their health and their prescription drugs. Anything that they need, health and prescription drugs is simply covered in full. So when I go out and I present and I help a consumer purchase a DSNP plan, we all have to keep in mind that those prescription drugs now are part of the LIS platform, that 385, 985 cost. So we have to run their medications to make sure that that private insurance carrier accepts and all their meds are on the formulary and that we have a heart to heart with the consumer to say, look, Janet, it's now going to cost you $6 a month for your medications, okay? So what I just did to you is going to increase your bills by $6 a month or $72 a year just by me helping you into this DSNP style plan. In most plans, keep in mind, right? Some plans um, have no cost on the insulin. Some plans have no cost in regards to their tier one, tier two for DSNP. Hit the carrier events, read up on the 2023. Uh, obviously, this will all be on the Excel spreadsheet for DSNPs that we provide to our agents as well. But let's go back to Joyce, Janet for a moment. I just increased this individual's bills by $72 a year. Now this person only makes $8.50 a month and they're barely scraping by. So why would I do that to them? And why would they even consider wanting a plan when I just increased the bills into your mailbox for $72 a year? Well, Medicaid would rather pull a tooth than fill a tooth. And this private health plan provides you $3,000 of additional dental. So you can have your bridge repaired. You can have that abscess tooth removed out of your head or filled or what have you. You will have better dental care. You will now have private door-to-door -door transportation. You're no longer needing to use that public transportation. I'm also providing you additional vision. So instead of getting either the black, green, red, or blue glasses out of the glass case that Medicaid offers, it provides you $300, $250, whatever it is, towards your vision needs. This particular DSNIP plan, Janet, will actually pay you $50 a month towards your heating or cooling bills. They'll also pay you $25 a month towards your groceries so you can get some healthy groceries. They're also going to provide you a free gym membership. They're also going to provide you a free diabetic uh, testing machine. They're also going to provide you a Fitbit. They're also going to provide you incontinent materials in the form of the over-the-counter benefits, right? So the $72 a year that I just increased your cost Let's walk through and really understand why we're doing this. And we're doing this to obtain the $350 a year of over-the-counter, the, the 24 uh, one-way trips of private transportation, the $4,000 of dental, the $250 of vision, the better hearing, whatever it may be to help you in your life. So if Janet is currently spending $20 a month on incontinent materials and I'm able to free up that $20 a month, there's no reason she can't pay for her $6 prescription drugs now. I'm hoping that makes sense, but you cannot, you cannot skim over the fact that this consumer now is going from this 100% covered plan into a plan that now costs them a little bit of money here and there, but we're freeing up all this additional uh, expenses on the back end, right? Keep that in mind. So you're receiving all these additional private benefits. And oftentimes when you do get down to the nitty gritty of selling that DSNP plan and you run the meds and they're covered and you find the physicians and they're covered and we talk about this, 
oftentimes that DSNP consumer will simply backpedal. Why, why, why? I don't want to come up with $6 a month. You know I'm broke, et cetera, right? So you oftentimes should be taking this away from the consumer. Hey, listen, Janet, listen. I don't know if you're going to qualify for this plan. You're going to need to have the specific right level of Medicaid, which I don't know if you have. You have to be in the right county and you have to be in the right zip code and we have to apply and make sure that CMS is going to allow for you to have this level of coverage. I don't know if you're going to qualify, but I'll be willing to swing the bat if you're wanting to see if you can qualify for these extra benefits. But I'm letting you know right now there's no promises. Okay, I can't guarantee that I can get you into this plan to help you get your bridges, crowns, implants, whatever the, right, your bills paid, whatever it is, whatever that hook is, that why they want this particular plan. I don't know if I can get you in. I'll do my best. I'll try, but no guarantees. Take it away from them. Everyone wants something more when it's taken away from them. A great sales technique, obviously, take it away from them, right? Go through this, make certain that they understand why they're getting into this DSNP plan, what the pros are, what the cons are, and what to look out for, and, and, and to really help them truly understand this level of coverage. Three steps to avoid complaints and rapid disenrollments. One, first step, always run a consumer's medications. Doesn't matter if it's a standalone prescription drug plan or a Medicare Advantage plan, you should be getting into the Medicare.gov website. The easiest place to go through is the SeniorEnrollmentSolutions.com website. The FAQ page at the top right corner Frequently asked questions, how do I enroll or compare in a prescription drug plan? Save that bookmark. That is the link. That's the spot where you're wanting to get into the Medicare website. You don't need to create an account, enter the consumer zip code and begin from there. Always, always run their medications. It is very important. I will let you know the first two to three days of AEP for the last eternity, Medicare has not been up to date on their, the CMS website, on the Medicare.gov website. For whatever reason, it's taking about 72 hours. So we all know that we can begin discussing Medicare Advantage prescription drug plans as of October 1st. We all know that you cannot enroll anyone until October 15th, but that's a great time to lock that consumer down, to know this is the plan I'm purchasing. My agent took care of everything. They ran my meds. They ran my doctors. I know exactly what I'm purchasing. I know the benefits that's changing from 22 to 23. If I'm remaining on the same plan, we just did a quick review, but I've gone through their medications, their positions, and we've locked down that mental process that as of October 15th, we know that we're going to be enrolling into this plan. Go through two, pick two of the six or seven value added benefits, right? The transportation, the dental, the vision, the hearing, the over the counter, the gym memberships. Go pick two of the hot topics and go through those hot topics with that consumer to let them know great news. As of January 1st, your new plan's going to start with $5,000 of dental or 300 of vision or what have you. So go book your appointment with Dr. Bob. So that way on January 2nd, you can go get your teeth cleaned. Here are the benefits of this particular plan. You're going to go out and get your teeth cleaned. How exciting on January 2nd or 3rd or whatever the case may be, right? We start scheduling appointments off of the plan that I'm selling them. Does that make sense? Now they're locked in. Now they can't change their plan because maybe their dentist isn't accepted. 
So I physically lock that consumer into those plans between October 1st and October 15th. The other number four, I would certainly suggest on this sheet as well, is I let my DSNP consumers know that they can change anytime, anytime. You need to change, I got your back, we're gonna change. Now we all know it's one time per quarter, but if I enroll someone on March 1st and they don't like the plan, something happens with their meds, I messed up, human error, who knows? As of April 1st, we're going to change plans, right? It's the second quarter. So not that I, I look for rapid disenrollments, sometimes it happens, but I do not let the consumer know that your next annual enrollment period, we're gonna review this. I let my DSNP consumers know as they're living on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis, not an annual basis, I let them know that, look, life happens. If something happens in your world, I need a phone call and I'll help you get your, your plan changed. So do not tiptoe around the fact that these consumers have an out. It does make it a higher volatility style plan, especially if their phone changes, their address changes, et cetera. However, you treat them right and you provide them all the information that they need up front and you'll have a consumer forever and ever and ever. You may have to change their plan twice a year. That's completely fine. But they're referring others to you that are in their six degrees of separation as well. There are several levels of Medicaid that carriers accept and don't accept. So once again, you have your QWDI, your qualified disabled and working individuals. These are individuals that are disabled partially, but still in the workforce. You have your qualified individual, your QI, and then you also have your Slim B, your specified low income Medicare beneficiary. Sometimes a carrier may have a special DSNP plan for consumers who have LIS. Sometimes, watch your state, reach out to us, and we'll help you understand who those carriers are. Most of the time, these consumers are better off, once again, in a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan. Do not put them in a DSNP. Do not give them that 30% coinsurance that most of these carriers will charge. So where do you meet a DSNP consumer? Out in your community. You have to get out into the community. Volunteer at a food pantry, a soup kitchen. There's churches, especially with COVID and everything else that's been going on in our, our society over the last few years. There are churches, I guarantee you, within a three-mile radius of your home that do a food drive. On the third Thursday of the month or the fourth Wednesday of the month, donate to the church. Give them 50 bucks. We'll help you set up a table. We'll provide you promotional items. You can go out and represent a carrier. You can go out and represent yourself if you so choose. We'll teach you how to intermingle and how to obtain more leads from the consumer. But this is a great, great, very inexpensive way to have your name in front of dozens and dozens of individuals. And there's many agents that write hundreds of apps out of the same church every year from the dual eligibles coming in to talk to other individuals, the water department, the, the, uh, your uh, consumer's energy or your electricity um, provider. There's donations in the back room for coats and clothing, what have you, right? So get into your community, your locations. We have Walmart stores, we have CVSs, we have Kroger stores, we have hospital networks, Cook County General, William Beaumont, whatever your state is or wherever you're currently at, reach out to us if you have an interest in working a location. What's nice about the locations and working those locations is not the time that you're there. The time that you're there is, frankly, sometimes, depending on the location, not the most productive use of your time. What you're after is just the stagnant marketing. What you're after is leaving your trifolds, your business cards out, where people don't want to talk to you per se. They just are looking to gather some information, right? They're, they're fearful of speaking to you because their ice cream is melting in the cart. But when you're not there and you have stagnant marketing out consistently, it will generate leads for you. 
your local events, your senior day events, your car shows, your local community centers, all have events. Sponsor the ice cream socials, sponsor the zoo days when the whoever comes in with the animals, sponsor something, their, their walk for diabetes or whatever it is. So you can get on the back of their t-shirt or into their flyers. Some of these events are as little as $50. If you have questions or, or you wanna know where there's events or how you can get plugged in, get into some of these events. The last event we just had was Wayne County Senior Fun Fest, 72 leads. 72 leads for one agent came out of that event. Get into the community, meet them face to face. So that way you can meet lots of people at one time and then you can phone them later. Do you remember my face? I saw you there. Let's get your application taken care of and let's get you enrolled in a plan, right? So set up a carrier table, food drive, section eight housing, skilled nursing housing events, build referrals with those in your community. Individuals in fabric stores where old people, the older population goes, Salvation Armies, St. Vincent de Paul's, your laundry mats are amazing locations to meet individuals. They will refer you out people that come into the laundry mats, especially during the annual enrollment period. This is a time that individuals talk and talk and talk about their fear and the changes with their health care and their changes with their health, help them locate them at your dentist offices, right? We have specific dental trifolds with carriers where it's not just this carrier trifold. We're hitting on the dental. We're hitting with the primary care physicians or the specialists. Some of these carriers offering no cost insulin or no cost um, uh, medications we're hitting those endocrinologists, the podiatrists, right? There's no reason why you wouldn't have your trifold sitting stagnant on the counter. And once a week, your, your job is to go hit those 20, 25 locations, make sure your trifolds are there and that Debbie, Joyce, whoever's behind the counter, the receptionist is referring patients to you, that you're friends with them that you have a stack of donuts in the back seat. If it's marketing, if you need assistance buying donuts, reach out. We will be happy to help you with that, but get in and know these individuals. Most of your decent clients don't have much of a web presence. Not many of them either have internet service or a phone per se that is a smartphone with a data package. Marketing to these individuals via social media is not really the strongest idea or internet exposure for that matter. Most of your DSNPs that you're not physically seeing are, are reached through direct mail campaigns. Something that's not a letter, they don't wanna open a letter because they're fearful it's a bill. So postcards typically, right now it's about a 1.8% rate of return. You send out a thousand piece mailer, you're getting about 18 leads out of it. As a seasoned agent, you should be able to close about 30%, 33% roughly. Uh, Non-seasons closer to the 22, 24%. Now you can always increase this, right? You can increase this by sending out a reply letter to these leads that are coming in. And we found that to be incredibly successful to send out a bifold with a magnet and their lead, their consent to contact, we physically mail back to them, which then creates this, how did you get my, my writing? I only write in purple pen, how did you get this? And we then have an, a conversation on what we can do to help them. Go where they go. The methadone clinics, your hospital networks, your food drives, your senior events, your barber shops, your primary care physician clinics like your Oak Street Health, your Chen Meds, your Dedicated, your Gen Cares, whatever it's called in your state. Get out there and visit with these consumers. C-SNPs, what is a C-SNP plan? So the D-SNP is that they're broke. They have no money, right? They qualify for Medicaid assistance due to financial. This C SNP is because they're chronically ill. There are lots of different C SNP style plans. 
lung conditions like COPD, heart disease, right? You got the Ruby plans, et cetera, on the west side of the country. And then diabetes. Now, here in Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, you have a CSNP plan for diabetes that's type 1 or type 2, which is unheard of, to provide them this extra level of coverage. So understand that the CSNP has nothing to do with Medicaid. We're not on that topic any longer. We're not talking about low-income subsidy any longer. We're talking about someone who has some money, possibly, may, may not, who may be on a spend down, may, may not. We're just talking about someone that is struggling in life to control their diabetes, let's say. These CSNP plans have specific levels of coverage and additional help and resources for these consumers. So financial aside, the consumer may qualify for a CSNP simply because they're unhealthy. They have something they're trying to manage. The government doesn't want to pick up their Part A and Part B and all these expenses. They'd much rather have it flow through a private insurance company that is simply much, uh, much better at handling and managing that consumer's care to keep everyone's costs down. So these CSNP consumers, watch the CSNP style and ask your consumer, which is okay, I understand that there's gonna be some questions that come about this, ask your consumer about any specifics and you'll know this off of the medications they're taking, right? If a consumer has, you know, albuterol and they're on pro air inhaler, et cetera, obviously they may have some COPD going. If they're on Genuvia, Lantus, what have you, they're a diabetic, right? Metformin even for your type two. You'll, as time runs on, you'll become a pharmacist on the medication side or at least understand why they're taking it. So that will lead me then into, wait, 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 wait. I didn't, I didn't realize Joyce, I'm so sorry. We were discussing just a zero premiums Medicare Advantage plan. There's this specific plan for those of you that are on any insulin or that you're diabetic. Let me talk to you about this particular plan. I don't, I don't want to shift gears too quickly on you, but let's really talk about your diabetes. You're on medication for it. You're, yeah, I am. Okay. And obviously the doctor knows that you're diabetic. Yeah, he does. Okay, great. Let's talk about this chronic program now, this chronic special needs plan that's going to provide you another level of care to help you with a specific disease, more so than a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan. Many agents don't offer the CSNP. They're, the qualification questions oftentimes are pretty easy but there is a little bit of legwork on the CSNP where the physician needs to contact the carrier and provide them, if necessary, a list of why they're, they are a CSNP consumer or candidate. A lot of agents on the Medicare Advantage plan side don't want to run the risk of enrolling someone in a CSNP only to have the carrier turn them down because they didn't reach those qualifications. So find the carriers obviously that are more lenient or find the carriers that are easier to work with on the CSNP style. Some carrier qualifications require once again additional information. So watch this, but it's the same as writing a DSNP too, right? Sometimes there's financial information that's required. It's up to you as an agent to cross your T's and dot your I's along the way. So we, there's no 100% guarantee that they're going to qualify for a DSNP. 100% guarantee they're going to qualify for a CSNP. But what you could do along the way is just make sure that you're crossing every path possible statistically to know that 99.9% .9 chance, Joyce, you're going to qualify for this, even if you have to take it away from her. Let's review. Your decent population continues to grow and grow and grow. My goodness, if you've seen the 2018-2017 maps, 
that we've provided or if you've kept those as an agent and you look at what 2023 looks like, the level of competition, the level of plans that are offered in counties now where there was never a DSNP, CSNP, MAPD, even in that county just even two years ago is growing absorbent, like exponentially. We are getting into some insane CSNP, DSNP competition, which is awesome for our clients, right? Amazing for our communities to help them obtain all this additional benefit. So keep in mind, and once again, pick the two value-added benefits. Don't, I go through them all, but obviously if you're talking to a 28-year-old that doesn't have hearing issues, why are we really discussing the specifics of hearing when we need to really talk about your transportation or really talk about the over-the-counter benefits more so, right? So pick the two. Know how and where to market your DSNP and CSNP clients. If you have marketing materials that you're looking to create, please get those to us. Once again, go back to webinars. Everything has to be HPMS approved now, right? CMS approved, you have that multi-plan code. If you do not have that multi-plan code on your materials after October 1st, we're gonna be in a problem, right? So when you ever you mention the value-added benefits, or anything plan specific, either order your materials directly from the carrier. So you have carrier approved materials with your name and number on it. Or if you're looking to create your own, please reach out to us sooner than later so we can make sure that you have that multi-plan code approval. Your homework, order carrier specific trifolds and your marketing materials now. You have 36 days roughly until AEP begins. Begin ordering. If you have any questions on, hey, John, I'm looking to have a specific diabetic brochure. My primary care said that I could leave one on their counter. Can you help me get one created? Or do you know where I would go to receive this? Or hey, I'm looking for a, a specific dental plan, or my wife works at a hearing aid doctor's office. I'd love something on specific hearing aids. Reach out to us so we can help you get these created or order them from the carrier. Leave your materials at dialysis clinics, endocrinologists, podiatrists, durable medical equipment, dentist office, primary care physician offices. Get your name out there get either your trifold holder or that's what most people would prefer is a, a trifold, right? A smaller holder as opposed to a whole eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper sitting on their counter marketing for you, right? So they prefer trifolds, print your flyers, consistently meet and visit at these locations to get them hung up. If you're only going to 10, if you're only going to 15, that's totally fine. Pick the 10, pick the 15 you want to go to and religiously hit that on a weekly basis. I know every morning on Wednesday, I spend from eight until noon hitting these 12 locations. And then I plug myself in and I start dialing my leads or I'm out in the marketplace or whatever the case may be, right? But that consistency goes so, so far. Most of these individuals, especially your DSNPs, have had this one and done relationship with an agent, whether or not it's on a call center or whether or not it's in a soup kitchen, food drive, church parking lot, whatever it may be. It's up to you to build this relationship with them. Let them know I'm here for you. I'm here the whole way through. Whatever you need, I got you. And that's when your referrals obviously will begin to grow. Order, create, and begin your monthly mailing campaign. If you are not producing leads, even just a thousand piece mailer every month, let's begin there. Let's get a thousand piece mailer ordered, knowing that you're receiving about 18 leads, obviously with AEP coming, that will increase. You use an SES approved DSNP mailer, that will increase because they're in color and it's doesn't require as much information. If you have questions on mailer pieces, where to mail, how to mail, please reach out to us. I know we're almost out of time. 
my last tidbit for all of you on is get your call recording platform set up if you have not done so yet. I beg of you, know the CMS rules, know the three things that are changing, that you have to state that disclaimer in the first 60 seconds, your calls need recorded, you need to have that disclaimer on all of your emails, your websites, et cetera. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please reach out to us. SES is offering a free call recording platform for SES agents. If you happen to not be an SES agent, you just tuned in for additional information, thank you for tuning in. We are discounting the platform. It's like $574 a year through the carrier provider. We're discounting that down to $240 a year for non-SES agents. If you're an SES agent, it's free of, of charge to you. So get your call recording platform set up, get your phone number ported if needed. Let's make sure that we're compliant moving into AEP and we're not struggling the last week or two of September trying to understand and figure out the compliance rules to what Medicare has changed. Once again, I'm John with Senior Enrollment Solutions. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be off next weekend due to the holiday. And then I believe we only have two or three webinars left. If you're missing one, if you need one, please reach out. We'd be happy to send you the link to YouTube or, or walk you through, share the webinar or the PDF with you. Let's get yourselves prepared to have an amazing annual enrollment period.